What's going on, people? Fame and the Tame here from LV1Gamer.com. Thank you guys for rocking with me once again. This is 15 Minutes of Fame, where I like to spotlight people in the gaming community who I think are freaking awesome and give them their shine, their time to shine on our platform. Today, I have an incredible uh, content creator with me uh, from Burnout. What's going on, Matt? What's going on, my friend? I'm so stoked to be here. I'm, I'm happy to walk with you. Like I, I told you before we started, the name is brilliant. You're brilliant. This is going to be an awesome show. I'm, I'm stoked to be here. Listen, with that being said, Cue the music. For 15 minutes of fame, I can settle for being ordinary. But nobody remembers the ordinary. It's the ones who live forever. Trendsetters, trendsetters. Because not everybody can be trendsetters, trendsetters. All right, guys, as you know, 15 minutes will be on the clock. Matt from Burnout Brighter will have his time to shine. Matt, feel free to use this 15 minutes to promote yourself because you have something you, you're going to get into that I think is absolutely imperative. We talked a little bit before about the show. We, look like we talked a little bit about it before the show, and I think this is a great topic for people to go on. So 15 minutes starts now. All right. Well, hey, everyone. If you don't know who I am, my name's Matt. I'm from Burnout Brighter. We're a, a podcast slash YouTube channel slash community all about video games, mental health, and social justice. There's kind of the big three wheelhouses that we operate in. Uh, we love to talk games. We love to talk about the great parts, the parts that matter, the parts that really make a difference. And and, and that doesn't mean we don't talk about the hard stuff because we definitely do. And, you know, we've, we've had a couple of tears on the show before, but it's it's all good stuff. And, you know, if you want to come hang out with us, you can find us at YouTube.com slash Burnout Brighter or just search up the Burnout Brighter podcast at any podcast network of your choosing. You'll find us. And yeah, so uh, as to what Fame was alluding to, we are currently working on a mini series that should be live by the time that this is going to air. Um, and what it is, is we're doing a mental health mini series where aside from the podcast that we have go live every Wednesday, uh, we're going to be talking to a bunch of doctors, clinicians, psychotherapists, psychiatrists, and really getting down into mental health. And you know, each episode is going to have one or two different focuses going from something like depression to anxiety to you know suicidal ideation, because we feel like this time of year can be really difficult. I mean, well, I mean, any time of year can be difficult, but this this kind of changing of the seasons, the holidays, the coming off the New Year's, it's, it can be a lot for some people, and we want to try and do our part just to have a conversation about these things so you can know where we're at, uh, you know, what we've gone through, while also talking to, you know, actual clinicians and not just us yelling at you about the things <laughs> that we think are important. It's, you know, people who genu genuinely know what they're talking about to, to kind of, you know, help you learn and help you if you are struggling. So, um, Make sure you guys come check us out. We're also going to be fundraising for Guardians Mental Health, which is a, um, a you know, a group of people who do a lot to train psychologists and psychotherapists and, um, and you know, different psychiatrists about geek culture and how they can work within geek culture to help somebody feel better. They also send out free mental health kits to anyone who requests one, uh, you know, no charge on the person. They just, they're doing their part to try and make the world a bit of a better place. And we want to do what we can to help them out. So we'll be doing a bunch of giveaways once we hit certain, you know, tiers uh, of money raised. Um, so if you want to get cool stuff, like, you know, Game Pass Ultimate Codes, come hang out with us. We would really appreciate it. But basically what I want to do, Fame, you know, to kind of stay on this topic, because, you know, when we talk over at Burnout, we always like to talk about a game that matters. We, we, we spent a long time talking about the games that matter to us. And now every time we have a new guest on, we always ask them about a game that matters. And these are games that could have gotten through someone, gotten through, gotten someone through a tough time. Mm -hmm. These are games that we feel make a difference. These are games that we feel should be celebrated, not just because, you know, they're a triple A game. They're not just because they're a stellar indie, but because they deal with situations that we feel are important or they were there for us when sometimes other people can be. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to be talking about five games that I think are incredibly important uh, for mental health and okay. games that if you are if you are struggling in some way may just do a little bit of a difference to kind of help guide you in a certain direction or again you know just kind of be there because all five of these games have been there for me and the first one that I want to start off with is you know my own namesake uh, for Matt makes games Celeste is one of my Ooh. favorite games of all Ooh. time and it's just one that has such a profound story on top of it being an excellent game on top of it being hard as hell while also having so many accessibility options to let you tackle it in the way that you want to do on top of it just being like having a pixel perfect incredible platforming that i absolutely love the game tells a story about someone who is struggling who is trying to get up this literal mountain which could very easily be a metaphorical thing about struggling with yourself 
struggling with your identity, struggling with who is it that you are, who is it that you want to be. And as these kind of doubts begin to fester and as these kind of you know negative thoughts begin to permeate and you know in the game light spoilers i'm not really going to give anything away but you know take physical shape in in one of the antagonists it's so brilliantly done and it it feels like once you get to the end of this this warm hug it's a game about self-reflection it's a game about you know overcoming obstacles it's a game about failing and i think celeste does it in such a beautiful way that we're going into it i kept hearing about how you know, how important the game was, how incredible it was, how much fun it is, well, how hard it is. You know, chasing after those strawberries is just <laughs> ridiculous, it's so hard. But like, I kept talking, I just kept hearing about the story and in a 2D platformer, that's not something you generally really hear about when you're looking at a game that looks like that and not, you know, there's no issue with the way that it looks, but it blew me away with its depth, with its care, with just how incredibly important that game can be and it sits in like you know my top 10 games of all time now not just because it is a stellar game but because it tells a story that you can see yourself in it's very easy to identify and to relate to a lot of the issues that go on in that game and a lot of the things that happen because i would pretty much wager a guess that at one point or another we've all been there in some way shape or form indeed there's a point in that journey that you can identify that you can feel um, and it, I, I, that's, that's why the first one in my list, I had to start with Celeste because I'll never stop talking about it. I'll never stop talking about how important it is and how genuinely meaningful the story can be. Um, and also it just, I love, I love games that piss, piss, piss people off. Sometimes they're like, why is the protagonist the female? Why is she <laughs> part of the LGBTQ plus community? It's like, shut up, dude. The game is fantastic. It tells a story that is important and meaningful. And it pisses all the right people off, so go yes. check out Celeste. I'm with it. I'm uh, with it. <laughs> right? I know. I'm saying. It's just so important. Um, another game that Destiny and I um, both, and Darren actually, Darren played it after Destiny and I wouldn't stop singing about it, um, is a game called Lost Words Beyond the Page, coming from Sketchbook Games. And now, I'm going to, I should have said this before Celeste, but I'm going to plaster a massive content warning on a lot of these games, not for things like graphic you know messed up or horror like elements but there are parts of these games that are genuinely difficult to get through depending on you know where your life's been um and what lost words beyond the pages it's a game that i had never heard of we applied for a review code just kind of on a whim because i saw it and i was like this looks cute and fame i have never cried that much playing a game before in oh, my man. life because of how absolutely devastatingly beautiful it was uh it tells the story of a little girl who's like seven or eight who's dealing with sickness in her family. Um, and the game is basically split into two different sections. One being you're platforming through her diary. The words will literally like come to life and kind of, you know, waver around the screen and you'll see beautiful pictures and art done through her diary as you learn about what's going on in in her actual life. It's, you know, you'll, you'll platform along the words, you go from page to page. They do some really, really cool and really, really interesting uh, game design choices that they have throughout those sections. None of it's difficult. This game is not going to be one that you're going to be like, oh, it's so hard because the difficulty comes in its subject matter. Um, and the second part of the game and everything's kind of woven in together is this fantasy world that she creates to kind of let herself escape where she has a character who journeys on this magical, fantastical adventure that obviously everything ends up linking back in some way, shape or form. And you'll jump between these two sections of the game as she's going through what she's going through. And dude, I have never, both dreaded and been excited for a section of the game that every time we come back to the diary, because there are things that anyone will go through mm. at any point in time. There are things that everyone will struggle with and it's never easy. And it's never something that's, you know, you just kind of get through. There are things that'll stay with you forever and seeing it all through the eyes of this young child and, you know, things that she doesn't understand as to why that they're happening and emotions that she has. It's just, it's so, incredibly well written well voice acted it's beautifully put together but i will warn you it is incredibly difficult to play um, hey. both my i was a mess the entire time through um my wife was looking at me as i was playing she's like do you want to take a break i'm like no i have to keep <laughs> going it's too important um and like destiny was the same way and you know darren when he played it after destiny i couldn't stop talking about it same thing we all cried it all hit us in a very very fundamental part of our being um, and it's it's a game that is on Game Pass now. It was oh. stuck on Stadia for a while, came to PC. Okay. Now it's on Game Pass as of like November. So it's immediately accessible. Go check out it, go check it out on Game Pass if you have the means to do so because it is just beautiful, it is brilliant. And as much 
as this next game has recently been celebrated, I feel like Lost Words is just not getting its due because this game is one of the most special games that came out last year. Uh, and not enough people are talking about it. And it's just, again, it's not a hard game, but it is a tough game to get through. Mm -hmm. um, so go check out Lost Words Beyond the Page. Um, this next game, again, is one that we reviewed and is a game that, completely, that caught me completely off guard. And it's a game called Before Your Eyes by Goodbye World Ooh. Games. Yep. Now, Fame, have you heard of Before Your Eyes? Have you played it? Yeah, I didn't play it, but when we got the review copy, uh, Dallas, man, did our review and he raved about this game. Yo, shout out to Dallas. That guy is the best. He's such a good guy. <laughs> but, um, before Your Eyes, for anybody who's unaware, uh, like I said, comes from Goodbye World Games and it came out earlier last year as well. And what it is, is it's a game, I don't really want to tell you too much about it, but what the way that you play it is actually with your eyes. Now they have accessibility options that you can turn that off and just play with the mouse. But the best way to do this is just to use your laptop camera, use whatever camera you have, and you're actually looking at it. And there'll be moments of the game where when you blink, time skips. And like I had moments where again, I pride at this game. Now imagine trying to keep your eyes open because you don't want this specific moment to end while you're crying and you're just like, oh my God, no, 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 I cannot let time pass. It's hard. It's it's beautifully done. And it tells the story of just this kid growing up and just dealing with expectations, dealing with things not going the way that you ever expected them to, dealing with this magical, again, this magical world that you can create because of the things that you're going through in reality. It's difficult and it has one of the most inventive control styles I ever said, like I said, mm -hmm. using your actual eyes to control the it's thing amazing. is incredible. Um, and it's beautiful and it's difficult and it's just, I, we reviewed Lost Words and Before Your Eyes pretty much back to back. And it was just one of the most emotionally oh, wow. destructive moments in my, I know, uh, <laughs> in my life. Uh, but I, they're two of my favorite games from last year because of, again, of how important they are. Before Your Eyes, really deals a lot with trying to figure out who you are, trying to figure out what other people's expectations for yourself are, and then dealing with things that you never expected to because you kind of have to. There's no other way around it. Mm -hmm. It deals with young love. It deals with growing up. It deals with, you know, your parents. It's it's hard and it's difficult. And again, go check it out because now there's a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people in the last month or two singing its praises, streamers checking it out and stuff. And that's fantastic because the game is something that's really genuinely special and should definitely be checked out. Um, the next game on my list is a game that I was hyped for, even though a lot of people weren't. Guardians of the Galaxy from Eidos Montreal, my dude. I was one of the few people that when that game got shown off, I was like, this is going to be, at this is going to be fine. I it's hated it when I first, when I first saw it, I was like, no way, and fell yeah. in love with it. <laughs> right? I was, I just remember being like, listen, if I get, if this game is a seven, if this game is just okay, then I'll get everything that I want from it. Say what you will about the Avengers game. The campaign is fine, everything else. <laughs> but Guardians, I was going into it being like, if this is just okay, if this is just fine, then I'm happy with it. If I get a fun, mm -hmm. dumb Guardian story, then I'm good with it. What comes is one of the most emotionally mature and thoughtful takes on grief, on <sighs> struggling, on being lost, on not finding yourself pretty much anywhere. And it deals with it in such an emotionally mature way that I was blown away. The game, it's the game is one of my favorites of last year. I think, it, I, think I put it in like my top three because of just how unexpected Guardians was. Mm -hmm. It was fun, it was great. It's the combat isn't perfect. There, there are obviously issues with it, but the way that I it's because they've become my favorite version of the Guardians, mm -hmm. and I've loved the Guardians comics, I've loved the Guardians movie. But their thoughtfulness, the way that they talk, the way that they interact with it, they're there for each other isn't always perfect but it's like for anyone who grew up with siblings there's a lot of that kind of sibling relationships yes, that it ties yes. together so well and that doesn't mean whether it's blood siblings or not it's you know this this family that's brought together and who are there for each other uh this is a specific scene uh with drax and star lord that just left me really reconsidering and thinking about grief and thinking about losing people and there's sections of that game that just I never expected going into a Guardians game and dealing with my own issues or problems that I was having in my real life and looking at that game and being like, maybe this is something I can learn or maybe this is a way that I can improve. Because it's a Guardians game. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a <laughs> comic book game. Yeah. Right? Like, who was expected something deep and emotionally I didn't. You know, <laughs> resilient? Exactly. So Guardians is there. And the last one that I want to bring up is called Spirit Fairer from Thunder Lotus Ooh. Games. Have you played Spirit Fair? I'm, I'm actually in the process of playing it. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, I won't spoil anything for you, but that game, again, 
deals with grief and i feel like the, the world the last few years there's been a lot more grief and loss than there ever should have been um but i'm glad that games like this exist because they kind of you will deal with it at some point or another and coming to terms with it and coming to understand it and coming to live with it is important and spirit of fear is all about passing on you play a girl uh or sorry you play a person who is ferrying people to you know to, to their to their passing on um, to the next step, to whatever it may be. You're helping them move on. And you're kind of sailing around a map while you're trying to fulfill kind of their last wishes before they leave. And those answers aren't always easy. It's one of my favorite things about Spearfarer. It's not like, oh, they wanted to eat a sandwich. They ate a sandwich, now they can leave. Things aren't always cut and dry. Things aren't always good. Things aren't always easy. There are moments that you genuinely feel, like I genuinely felt lost in that game. And there'll be moments where like, I'll never forget the first soul you kind of helped pass on because I kept expecting to cry. I kept expecting to go into it and being like, oh my God, I'm going to have so many feelings. And I didn't. And I put the game down and I was doing something else. And all of a sudden, like 10 minutes later, I just started crying. And it's just like, it's one of those things that kind of stood in my mind. And the more I played it, the more I was like, I miss this character. I miss what was happening here. I miss what was going on. It's thoughtful. It's profound. It's fun. Um, if you like kind of, you know, management sims where you're building up your boat as you're kind of going around, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's also on Game Pass. Game Pass, now. yep. I, I'm, okay, perfect. So it's still there. Um, it's it's just so thoughtfully put together. It's wonderful. All five of these games for me, Fame, are just games that have such importance that all deserve to be played for one way or another. And they're not always the easiest games to play because of their subject matter. But I, I took something away from all, each one of them to help me feel like, okay, I can use this in my real life moving forward. These are games that I think are important. These are games that should be celebrated. And these are games that matter in a really profound way when there's so many people struggling. There's so many people who don't know how to have these conversations or to find their voice to do this. Sometimes we need a medium like video games to help tell these stories so that we can find pieces of ourselves in them. All five of these games deserve every bit of what they get. And I hope they get even more because they are games that matter. And for the people who are wanting to see or read more about these games i'm going to put all of matt's reviews from burning out brighter of these games i'm going to put them in the link down everything about matt's going to be and burning out brighter will be in the link down <laughs> below but definitely these five games do goosebumps literal goosebumps like listen you talk about these games because this this is important again and i've openly said this before someone who struggled with mental health before video games have mm -hmm. been that outlet for me uh, even at times where even where they couldn't be i knew i could i had that to fall back on and for you to, mm -hmm. to be doing this what you're doing um, it's great, man, and, and to be able to talk about these games and have that passion and love for these games that you do um, is absolutely amazing, man. But I do want to ask you a question, okay? Sure. So for the people now, or oh, they're in love with you now like I am, or they're all in love with you, <laughs> I want to know more about Matt and Brian Out Brighter. If you can pick one thing for people to put their finger on about yourself or about Brian Out Brighter, what would it be? You know, I think that's... It's hard. I have, a, I have a hard time talking about myself. And again, like, I, I'm sure you can understand, mm -hmm. like, being a content creator, promotion and, and kind of marketing and, and kind of, you know, putting your best self on is difficult. Um, but one of the proudest things that I think about just kind of burnout in general, uh, and this has been part of us since the beginning, is our willingness to share the, even the crappier parts of ourselves um, or the more difficult parts of ourselves, mm -hmm. because there are moments where we have difficult conversations. Um, there are moments where we have talks about the stuff that we've gone through. To be really honest, I came into this year re in a really, really bad spot. Um, you know, like I was lower than I'd been in a long time. And it takes these conversations in this first episode that we're going to be having going up for the mental health series. It's just going to be me, Darren and Destiny talking about where we're at, what we've been going through. And to have these conversations, if there's somebody out there whoever just needs to listen, if there's somebody out there who feels like they need to have a conversation, I mean, if, the, if there's somebody out there who feels alone, us over here at Burnout are always going to be here for you. If you need to have a conversation, DM me on Twitter, find me. Well, I, I'm, I'm happy to talk. If you need to listen, if you need to, a space to kind of let things out, we're here for you. Um, because I feel like so, there's a lot of things, and there's a lot of content creators out there that just kind of get lost in the shuffle and something that I really appreciate about you guys. And you know, it's it's not to, to, to turn this around for just a second, <laughs> but there was a, when I was on 2XP just a little while ago, uh, we finished the recording and there was somebody that said like, I needed this today. You know, like I, I needed you to be there for me. And it was one of the crew and I don't want to name names because yeah. I don't want to toss anybody out, but like it's that simple message of we're here, whether yes. you need it or not. Um, 
And that's what I love about level one. And that's what I'm really proud of about Burnout is we're here and we will be here. And like, we'll talk about games. We'll talk about news. We'll talk about all the dumb stuff, but we're also going to have the conversations that matter to us and the conversations that we think need to happen because life isn't always easy and you need to hear about it because one of the big, most dangerous things that can happen is say, this is only happening to me. I'm alone. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. I'm by myself. So if you're, if you're looking for a space burnout here, and plus there's plenty of dumb stuff, there's plenty of ridiculous conversations <laughs> that we have. That'll never change, but we'll also, we'll, we'll be here for you if we can't be. Listen, everything about Burnout Brighter will be in the comment section down below on YouTube. Also, if you're watching this at LV1Gaming.com, all the links will be down below. So make sure you guys go check out Burnout Brighter. And Matt, Matt, this has been incredible. Thank you for spending 15 minutes with me today. You have been incredible. I can't wait because I'm I think I think I'm the last one to guest on Burnout Brighter. So I need to come on soon. I need to let Hugger and the team yeah. take her double XP and I'll come over and rock with you guys. It needs to happen. It's it's about yeah. time, right? I'm telling you, we're going to have a full burnout of uh, LV1 Gaming cross for this year. We're going to have a week of stuff together. Get ready for it. It's I'm, I'm absolutely ready for it. Listen, you guys are freaking awesome. If you're new to the channel, hit that like button. Share this out. You guys have been amazing. Get all your gaming news from LV1Gaming.com. We're out.